Hi everybody, Radical Gardener, how are you? Well, let's see, it is, oh, I don't know, oh wait, I've got a calendar here. Wow, it's the 23rd, so what, it's Memorial Day weekend? Well, what have I been doing? I've been floating around in my pool and in my garden, but as you can see from all the color I'm getting, it's so freaking hot. Uh, here, I'm just pulling this up. Um, it is so hot. 91, and it feels like you're gardening on the surface of the of Mars. Yeah. So, uh, but stuff's growing. I have some success. And I'll talk about that because I'm going to make a garden video because I want to show it off. And we've got our... Um, our water barrels in, we've got our generator hooked up, so you know, it's going really well. All right, so um, something happened last week. I mean, there was a real big shift. And you know, the people that I, that I talk to, and it's not many, um, you know, I really, I'm really not very good at small talk, and I like to talk about, you know, real subjects and ideologies, and you know, I just, I just like to, um, really have like intelligent discourse. So I don't like small talk. It's basically it. But um, so the people that I, that are, you know, really my my friends. Oh, my bird's gonna be so noisy. The people that are my friends. Um, we all experienced something last week. It was really big. We, we experienced a real shift. So let me explain, okay, because shift doesn't really say anything. Um, you know, for two and a half years, I've been researching. I've been, you know, digging. I've been, you know, in search of the truth. I've been, and, you know, we have to admit this year it got really like a whole new level of crazy and a whole new level of stupid. And um, it, it, it was just getting to be unbearable. Um, you know, if you're not one of the stupid ones, if you're not ignorant, if you're aware of what's going on around you, it almost feels impossible to, to maneuver your way around it because you're constantly seeing stupid. I mean, when you see people driving down the road with masks on in their own car. If you see them riding the bike out in the open fresh air with a mask on, or you see like, you know, everybody in this ultra fear mode, or you see like stores demanding that you do something and like they really have no right, or you, you know, see once again, another crooked politician is stealing the money or you, you know, I, you know, or you see that yet again, there's another pedophile. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And so, um, so we all have an event, um, you know, which will just tip us, you know, and for me, and, and it can be something really small. I mean, I know, you know, I quit drinking years ago and it was a really small thing that, that caused me to do it. And it was one sentence that somebody said, and, um, I, I was laying on a couch with a hangover and that person who had been sober, um, they said, you know, what's going on? And I says, oh, I, I think I have the flu. And he says, no, you get the flu a lot. And I knew he knew that I was drinking too much. And it, just that I wasn't hiding it anymore completely shook me out of this fog that I'd been living in. So it could be something really small. Um, so I went um, to pick up Chinese food. And I mean, Florida is pretty much open, you know, I mean, you'll have your stores, you know, say you have to stand in line. I don't go to them. Uh, if, you know, there's places you have to wear a mask, very few, very few, uh, I won't go, go into them. Uh, so, you know, and that's fine. You know, it's, everybody's got their right to, you know, do whatever. So I go to pick up food, uh, at a Chinese restaurant and we would love this place, but they're not, they weren't letting anybody in. Now, mind you, it's been 90 degrees down here for a couple of weeks, 80 to 90 degrees. So any virus that was here is dead, right? So um, it's like, it was double, like they built this whole section 
uh, in their doorway, which was like double paneled plastic and you had to open a plastic window to put your order in and there was a speaker, you had to speak through a speaker and then you're talking to someone on the other side of this, this double plastic with a mask on. And she was telling me to step away from the window. Uh, <laughs> but right before that happened, there was a woman standing in front of me who had a mask on. <laughs> and she goes, oh, who would think that we would, this is what our world had come to. And I go, yeah, this is where, what our, where our world has come to because of people like you who are walking around with mask on buying into the fear. Yeah, that's why we, so I'm just letting this woman have it, right? So by the time I get to this freaking, you know, whatever, <laughs> um, oh, every time I think about it, I can't believe it. I mean, I was fuming and I can't understand a word this woman is saying. <laughs> she's got a mask on through plastic. The speaker she's talking through is squeaking because it's just like it's about this big, you know. And so everything she would ask me, i go, I can't fucking hear you. <laughs> Take your fucking mask off. She goes, step back, please. I go, I'll step back. Fuck you. I don't need this. I was so flipped out. So I come home and my husband had... Had, you know, he doesn't have to go in the office, right? So, and it was really stupid on a conference call there and they're talking about their protocols and everything. And so he would had gone into meltdown. But I came home and I cried for a half hour. And through crying through that and what, you know, I'm blubbering to my husband, but it was so good for me because I got some clarity and, I, and what it was is, I was, I've been so, so disappointed by humanity and how easy it was to manipulate them and how easy it was to scare them and how controllable they become, they became in an instant, in an instant. And I just, it was this profound reality check and Tremendous sadness for my fellow human beings and, you know, all of it. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It was really emotional. So after that, I felt better. And the next day, I started to think about some of the tools that I have that can really release me from all of that. And I had done a meditation CD that's really good. It was based on Cameron Day's work. And then I had this permission to take that work and then do uh, uh, and put my own bent on it and add some of my own meditations. I had my healing music. And it's called Connecting to the, uh, to the God Self. And what it is basically, I'm sorry that bird is yelling. I'm so sorry. Um, let me let her uh, out of her cage. I'll be right back. It'll take 30 seconds. There she comes. I know. Here you are. There she goes. She just wants to fly around. Okay, so it's called Connecting to the God Self. And it's where you just take, it, it, there's a lot to this thing. And I'm going to put a link below because that was the deal that when I told Cameron I was going to take his work and I was going to put some of my own stuff on it, the deal was is that I don't charge for it, so I'm going to include it below. But it's really about the art of transmutation where you take something where you're having really negative thoughts. I mean, you know, I've, I have had a lot of negative thoughts where I thought, God, what an asshole, what an idiot, you know, you know, and you're doing that all the time. And um, so, uh, but you can, you can take that. I mean, that's, that's organic. You're having a reaction, right? But you can always go back and grab that thought and 
and send it into the, you know, and, and I'll use the words that mean something to me. You can send it in, send it to the, the center of the, of the galaxy, to the galactic being, to the, to the, uh, to the all knowing, to the all loving, to God. Um, and you can send it there and transmutate it into a loving thought. And it's a process that you go through and it's very simple, but it works and it works fast. I mean, it works right then and there. And so, um, I started to really think about how, you know, Rudolf Steiner talks about how we have a shadow self and then we, then there's us. And the shadow self is that, I don't like to use the word dark, but it's definitely a shadow. And it isn't of the highest order. And we're all, it attaches itself to us when we're born. And it's that, maybe it's that negative ego. Maybe it's, uh, you know, who knows what it is, but it is definitely present. And it doesn't go with you when you pass, pass over uh, into your next um you know, into your next dimensional self. So it, it, it can only live in this third dimensional reality. But what you feed into it is leaves a mark on you. And so when I go to cross over, I want to cross over you know, in the highest, in the highest way. I want to, I want to cross over with, with love and with compassion and humor and goodness. And I want to feed that into the Akashic records. I don't want to, you know, have this heavy shadow, you know, self that I've been feeding into for years and years over things like politics and COVID virus and, you know, you know, all the awful things that have been going on. I mean, there's some just horrible, dark things that are going on. So, you know, what am I going to do with, about that, right? So once I committed to the fact I was just going to do it, everything just went away. And I felt lighter. Nothing bothers me anymore. I mean, I can see who's, who is, um, who's evil and who isn't, and I'm not wearing it like a heavy coat. I'm just observing it and understanding everybody here is playing a part. And though that's very difficult to accept that some of these people are actually part of what is necessary right now. I just have to understand that's what's going on. And I also had to remind myself that, you know, there is a divine plan. And this, I, what do I have to do with that? I mean, you know, uh, you know, nothing's ever going to happen in my time frame or on my terms or how, the way I think it's going to happen. There's a divine plan. So, you know, once I reminded myself that God is in charge and I'm not, and uh, or Nancy Pelosi or Donald Trump or uh, you know uh, you know Obama or you know any, anybody I mean like it's it's um, it's of a much higher uh, purpose and it's impossible to see it all and to know what is really happening though I sort of suspect what's going on right so what a relief that was. But I wanted to share this with you because I, I posted it on Facebook because all my friends had this shift last week. And then when I posted on Facebook, so many people on Facebook said they had a shift last week. So something shifted, right? So I'm going to share this with you this little bit. When the Incas spoke of Pachamama, they were referring to Mother Earth, but they were also referring to the sun, moon, stars, galaxies, and to the physical universe itself. They were addressing the great mother that exists at the heart of all creation and which cannot be divided, which cannot be divided. 
It is time for us to now enter into a new understanding of Gaia based on, and I like to call it Sophia, that's the name of the earth, Sophia, but earth, based on this awareness of non-duality from the perspective of our senses, there is division and multiplicity in the world. From the perspective of the, of the rational mind, this expresses an experience of duality. But when we enter the perspective of the intuitive mind, this apparent division drops away. And when we enter the realm of Sophia, the earth, our earth mother, as soul, we recognize in her the same great mother that moves through all aspects of creation, including ourselves. Our relationship with the great mother is changing. As uh, as light enters deeper into the realms of the inconscient, the creativity and power of the Great Mother can no longer be restrained. In relating to Gaia as the Great Mother, we also, we also free within ourselves an infinite power of creativity and love. Hey, that's why a whole bunch of us love to garden, because you are connected to the Earth Mother, but we all are, no matter what we do. Mira Althasa, the spiritual partner of Sri Aurobinda, who is usually referred to simply as the mother, says that our current universal cycle is different from the six universal cycles that have preceded it. So this is big stuff, you guys. In the history of our universe, there have been six consecutive periods which began, began by a creation, were prolonged by a force of preservation, and ended by disintegration, a destruction, a return to the origin, which is called pralaya. And that is why this tradition is there. But it has been said that the seventh creation would be a progressive creation, that is after the starting point of the creation, instead of its being simply followed by a preservation, it would be followed by a progressive manifestation which would express the divine more and more completely so that no disintegration and return to the origin would be necessary. So we're literally moving, moving through and up. With the emergence of what is known as the supermind from the midst of... Uh, of consciousness. We are stepping into the seventh universe. This has not happened before. Do you hear that? This has not happened before. That's why it's hard. We're giving birth. We're giving birth something we don't know. Birth is tough. It's hard. It's hard work. It's labor. Our collective subconscious still holds memories of prior cataclysms and destructions, and we therefore expect that any process of transformation must be accompanied by doom and gloom. And I always say, it does not have to happen like that, and nor will it. You know, when people talk about, oh, stop, there's going to be no food. I know that's BS. I know it's BS. Okay, let's go back to where I was. But this is no longer necessary. With the supramental force, supramental force, starting to penetrate the, in, the consciousness of matter, activating the presence of the supermind, we are quickly entering an age of plasticity where physical substance, including the physical body, is no longer subject to the laws of entropy and death. So we become one with the cosmos. I believe this also applies to recurring cosmic events such as galactic superwaves, solar micronovas, and geomagnetic reversals, grand solar minimums. The application of the supramental force to, the, to these phenomena, oh my God, I just forget. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, I can't talk. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to make light of this because it's a really big deal. Rather than pushing us back into an extinction level event could open entirely new timelines based on progressive manifestation. That's exactly what I was saying when I was having this meltdown. I said, I just feel like I want to be on a different timeline. I actually said that, right? Assuming this shift 
takes place within our lifetimes, it may be that the majority of humans are still too identified with the forces of dissolution and not plastic enough to make this shift with their physical bodies intact. On a planetary level, however, the Great Mother has been incarnating deep into, into us, into our consciousness. Gaia, Sophia, is being prepared to ride the supramental wave and need not recapitulate earlier cycles of catastrophe and extinction. Rather, she can use the incoming cosmic electricity to shape realities not yet imagined. Don't you feel like that's what's happening? I do. Something different's going on. And it's high. It's high vibration. So that's why calling people names and getting caught, it was not working for me. Because it, it, it's not what I came here to do, right? I came here to hold, hold a vibration, to hold the light, to love, to be, be compassionate. It doesn't mean you go stupid. It doesn't mean that you don't see the evil, but you don't get caught up in it. You don't identify with it. You just look at it and you go, okay, like that person, we don't need that person if they're going to do that, we don't need them here anymore. We don't need that kind of activity anymore. You know, we're of a higher, we want to, we want to operate in a higher realm, you know. So it's okay to call things out, but don't bring all the, all the, you know, hatred and, you know, being upset and we're going to die. And I'm telling you, that's why I got, I got out of most groups because I just couldn't listen to it anymore. And I knew it wasn't true. I just knew it wasn't true. So I hope you stayed with me through this. I know that maybe some of it sounded a little convoluted, but, you know, I'm just here to say that there was just peace on the other side of that. And I, I want to include that link down below and, and hopefully um, you can use it. Now, I do want to tell you there's a lot of talking on it and it's, it's there for a reason. Um, because it keeps you out of ego. It keeps you out of negative ego where you start thinking about the future or the past. So if you're just listening to the dialogue, to the word, um, it keeps you in the center of things. So there's a reason for that. Because, you know, a lot of time, not a lot of times, but some people say, well, there's so much talking. Well, yeah, it's just to keep you on what the work is at that moment because there's exercises for you to do. Um, but there's also something really cool at the end, which is definitely my work, um, which is, you know, freeing you from, uh, from ancestral, uh, you know, baggage so that uh, you're not carrying that around with you, which can really release a lot of things, release disease and, you know, a lot of sadness. So, um, but anyways, it was my gift, you know, for me to you. So, anyways, you guys, um, Radical Gardener, from my garden to yours, be your garden always grow. And you know, I'm sending you a ton of love because that's what I do. Okay, goodbye.